Hello and welcome back to the VPL. We are here with game nine of the finals. It is the end. Of course, as you know from the previous video, uh, the Owl Coop has already won, so they are the champions. So the result of this game does not really impact much, but I thought we'd get it here just for, uh, uh, what's the word? For completeness sake. So I'm joined here by my very good friend, JJ, GG, Mr. Rogers. Hello, hello, welcome. Hi, hi everybody. How are y'all doing? Howdy neighbors, um, here again with uh, Ben with the VPL, the Vanguard Premier League. It is a fantastic bi-weekly, weekly event actually, uh, which has been so, so, so fun to be a part of. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely get your thoughts on it as the video goes on. Just quickly addressing let everyone know the reason this video is going to be in this format rather than traditional like two-player remote format is because as you will see very soon, there's a slight, there's a slight issue with the recording, which is unfortunate. Uh, but we are trying to make the best of it, what we can, so you will still see some gameplay, but throughout this video, you'll notice that JJ and I will focus <clears throat> a lot less on direct commentary, and more just like, you know, discussions about Vanguard, discussions about what Chicken Winnish is playing, and, you know, back and forth about the VPL going from there. So while they have uh, their everything open, I just want to quickly touch upon the decks that they're playing, uh, because... Yeah, just to get an idea of the matchups. So, uh, Shirataka is on Messiah, and Chicken Winning is on Ava. So, what's your thoughts about those matchups in, in general, like from a high level perspective? Uh, I think Messiah could have a little bit of leverage depending on if they get to survive whatever Ava's Grey 2 turn can be. So, I could say Ava does have a little bit of, um, I would say it's probably like. 60 40 for Ava favorite personally, mm -hmm. but that depends on like what the burst can can come out with. Uh, if Ava can't put them to like three or four damage by their grade three turn, I feel like Messiah could run away with it, depending on whose goes first for sure. Um, it depends also on the GB2, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not you can draw a lot of cards off of the Messiah GB2 effect and getting rid of upscadades with GB2 is fantastic for Crest deck. So uh, we'll, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, absolutely. Like this is probably the matchup where you know we're seeing nowadays in standard that it's all about like this big grade three turn, and I think the Ava versus Messiah exactly encapsulates that because obviously Messiah wants to go second so they can get their first stride, extra draw shenanigans, but Ava going first can obviously you know blue lab, fine upscale, and to go crit 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 you, which is insane. Uh, and yeah, like you say, like once Messiah if Messiah can survive that and get the ball rolling, they'll just bind the upscale aids. And then Ava just loses a lot of steam and pressure. So definitely you can see what happens here. We see here Ava does is going first. So not clear who won the dice roll since you know, this is the situation they both want to be in. Uh, we are yeah. going to see Shirataka drop the research with all his monsters, which is very unfortunate. Oh, uh, because like I've seen later iterations of the, the, the deck is that they're running also the PGs as well, which has mm -hmm. always been a very good addition. I've seen some people actually run the previous Ava grade uh, one monster. I forgot what its name was again. Um, oh, Wavelos. Yes, Wavelos. Yeah, yeah. Like two copies of it at some point. I felt that was a little bit on the greedy side, but I can I can understand that you really need to hit your monster threshold because yeah. situations like this can happen, right? You just... You end yeah, up here. like a standard Ava deck should contain around 11 to 12 monsters. You know, you've got your four Immigras, which we did see him discard on turn one, which is strong. Uh, you've yeah. got like yeah. three, you know, three to four Radabilio, three PGs, and like one or two Secondals. So whiffing mm -hmm. there is, does, is painful, but he does at least have the Immigra for the second turn. We also see uh, Chicken Winnish discarding the, it looks like the Energy Cycler there. So you got to draw three cards on his first turn, which is very strong. And the Mikani for some early rush. I think that's an Immigra that just went to damage? Yes, it was. There's one in damage, one in drop. There was a front trigger that was drive check on a one to pass here. Mm -hmm. Sadly enough, uh, I, I do agree with not going for the guard. I feel like maybe a 5k shield could have been an investment, especially if you do happen to have like an upscale degree two in hand or something like that, especially yep. if you're just going to be able to use it later. Mm -hmm. Um, But, oh, there we go. We get to see a, a another um order here, monster order. Yep. Research. The front there is particularly relevant as well because uh, Shira hit that defensive as well on the first damage, but then chose chooses not to drop that 5k shield and to take the second damage, which I think, obviously it being an Immigra, in hindsight, we can say like, oh, he should have got that because he then draws the Immigra, which is really strong. Mm -hmm. But 
I think taking the damage is fine because Ava does scale with Counterblast pretty well. Yes. Uh, it is able to, like, you know, turn every single piece of Counterblast into, like, an extra draw, into extra pressure. And, you know, Combine Rushes, you know, being numbers is also really great. You know, combine Rush and calling itself out is also basically a plus one. You, know, you save a card in hand. And, yeah, we see there the wavy loss. You know, like, some people, some to say, like, I, the most of this I've seen don't have wavy loss, actually. So this is an interesting tech here. Yeah, as I said, like, I think it's been a sort of like a new thing people have been trying to do because they realize like 12 might not just be enough. Like mm -hmm. somewhere between 14 or 16 might be a, a better sweet point. But I, uh, I'm i hesitant because then you end up getting rid of a lot of the strong booster that make ever so strong. There's even some people who ended up like getting rid of combine rusher and stuff. Mm -hmm. You do get like an extra draw and your columns are a little bit more fat. But uh, I don't know if those are, like, ver variable good reasons for you to get rid of it. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's more the case of, like, you want to run multiple copies of other more important cards, is how I see it. Like, you know, he here we see the Wave of Lost drew him a card. It's now, this is an 18k column going into um, Chicken Winnings' uh, 8k body, which is really good. But... The fact that it's, it's only a 13k booster when you already have Red Abilio making numbers and it doesn't get any extra shield to offset that, it means that like you're digging into slots like Secondal, which you can use to recycle Poison and Paradises, or you're digging into your Combine Rusher slots, which is good for like getting that first attack. So it's a very, I'd say, front-loaded card in that you know, all your pressures, like you're getting the value of it immediately rather than later. And given that Ava is the sort of deck that really like has that strong grade 3 turn but wants to like push to a grind, in most matchups, barring this one, having front-loaded effects might not be, I think, might not be what you want. No, not at all. But, I mean, I wonder, like, do you feel, like, with how the meta is going right now, the turn three being, like, super strong, especially after we got, like, a lot of the Festival Collection Grade 2 cards, mm -hmm. do you feel like we're back at Grade 2 gaming again, but in a different, a different direction? Rather than a different direction, I would say it's not quite grade 2 gaming. I would say it's more like... There was at one point in D, like, back in, like, set 4, set 5, where, like, the first two or three turns were, like, mattered the most, right? Like, once you get to turn 3, turn 4, once you get, like, Persona Ride, it didn't matter. Like, that was basically, like, the game was ending on that point. And it's got improved since then, and I feel like we're steadily heading back in that direction, especially, like, at the time of recording... Uh, set 3 has just come out, like, you know, people are, like, starting to play Shoujo Doji, uh, people playing, like, Silverthorn, you know, these decks that can just, like, put the gas on turn 1 and then not lose anything for it, whereas, compared to, like, decks back then, like, Bruce or Bastion or Orphis, like, these super early strong decks, they didn't have that ability to, like, keep going, and now, especially with the meta, we've got, like, these stride decks that are all about keep going, it's really tough to, kind of, before, you could, like, hedge your bets, and now you're in this sort of weird damned-if-you-do, damned-if-you-don't situation where it's like, you, know, you can't just go down the middle, you have to commit one way or the other, and if you commit wrong, you lose. Yeah, where a lot of people are trying to figure out what defensive tech options. Yeah, I think it's also one of the cool things I've start, we've started to notice with a lot of the design uh, of uh, a lot of the archetype-specific cards is that they also have a defensive mm -hmm. options on their on their skills nowadays rather than just only like oh you get a static 5k power it's like okay you got 5k power 5k shield and you also are archetype specific card support unit yeah. which we, which has been a thing that has not been seen in a very long time i think the last time we ever saw that it was like during g era if i'm not mistaken yeah exactly the game's a lot more interactive now which i think is great i just wish it was a bit more balanced yeah it wasn't just like shoujo doji getting everything or like <laughs> You know, stride decks being the ones who like you know everyone gets anti stride decks. It's like it's a little. Homie, they're they're, like they're your, taking a uh, step in the right direction. I'll give them that. Don't you like your card getting you a card while also minusing your opponent to fifteen cards? Don't you like that, homie? Come on. Oh yeah, for sure. Quickly paying turning back attention to the game. I just want to point out that like so we do see chicken winning. You know, his going up to poison straight away on great on turn three. Your opponent's still on grade two. Uh, Obscade was found off the blue lab, so it has the crit, so we got the pressure on. But from what we can tell of this tiny, tiny little thing in the bottom right, uh, it does look like uh, Shirataka was able to make a tri-lane on turn two. So you've got that pressure going in. It looks like Shirataka's only on one damage, 
and I think it's face down, so it's probably a Valtrosa that was being played there. So it's one damage to three. Big lead there for Shirataka. If they can like avoid taking going up to four on this turn, that puts them in a really strong position going into the Amnesty turn. So there's a possibility they just might like end up guarding this for 15, eating Vanguard, or they might try to opt into a defensive trigger here. Yep. Then guard Van, because the Van right now is like 18, because it gives like 5 and 5 to upscale and yep. itself, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And this clears whatever front row. This is a really good heads up play. Most other players would have probably tried to go for another crit to try cheese out and close out a game, but he knows he's playing against a formidable opponent who's going to account for that. Yeah. Um, and now he'll just say, okay, well, I probably can't take you out this turn, but I'm going to clear your board so you can't use any of your threatening lockers against me. Self-lockers. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the other rearguard column on the front row for Shirotake is. Like, we know there's definitely a Liao Valtrosa because the mm -hmm. counter blast is face down. But yeah, yeah like, at this point, he's going to... I think that's a front he's dropping there. Like, me and my Brandgate eyes can see quite closely. Like, I'm surprised he didn't <laughs> choose to intercept knowing that those Great Twos are going to go away because of the Obscadade to begin with. Uh, I think it just might not have been worth it for him in terms of shield value. Mm -hmm. He might have not even had like 15k shield to be able to invest into it then. Yep. I mean, you know, the greedy two, uh, front for a two to pass and uh, Chicken Winnish does not break it. He's going to let his front row go away and I think he took that third damage. Okay, let's see. Does he have a little bit of shield value here? This is going to be swinging in for 28. Uh, he's thinking about it. I, yeah, it looks like he didn't hit a defensive, so he's gonna have to. He's gonna take the oh. two. Doesn't have the twenty k shield. Goes to five. That's tough. Uh, I mean, any defensive triggers he was gotten is no longer mm -hmm. important since it's the end of battle now. It does open him up to healing down, but Messiah's not really a deck that goes through counter blast quickly enough to like need the heal for as a counter charge. So mm -hmm. I think I feel like he would rather have like banked on those heals later on once the damage becomes a bit more even. So you know, like. If they're both on four, a heal there is really, really good. But when your opponent's on three and you've gone up to five, the heal is it's less valuable, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, I think I get what you mean, yeah. And it looks like he's going to put the Awaking in the front row there, which is really uh, not what you want to be doing. I mean, especially if you're in a situation where you probably only have like four cards in hand, majority of them possibly might be triggers, no real good attack extenders. You invested them into the early game, you couldn't use it. Uh, oh, he's going to get rid of the crit obscadate. I mm -hmm. think that's okay. How do you feel about that? I, I thought he would have probably aimed for the grade two. Would you have done the same? Uh, I would have gone for the crit one. Like, you have to assume mm -hmm. that your opponent is playing, still playing at least one secondal to be able to recycle things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, especially now with Valtrosa being able to recycle a rest of Messiahs, you don't mind mm -hmm. like your board being wiped because you can always get them back. Plus, you know, you have Messiah normal order as well now. So just staving off that crit pressure is really huge. Obviously, you're, you're on 5, so the crit pressure doesn't really make a difference unless you heal down to 4. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we did find the arrest there. It looks like he just locked his own board. But it is going to be only 4 attacks this turn rather than 5. Yep, yeah, that is indeed the case. Unlock, unlock. And I think because he only has the 2, like, at the end of this, he's only going to have the 1 lock card being the arrester. So GB2 is only going to go off twice. So I think I really like what he's done there, where he's kept the McCarney in the back row as a booster just to make numbers in the early game rather than like you know immediately shoving it to Soul and banking Soul for the next grade two turn. Because we have to you know he's not assuming, but he's accounting for the fact that he might not have a second chance to use GB2, which I think is also really huge. And especially since now when we are gonna be going into the Everturn, they're gonna be able to activate the persona right straight out of the deck with their poison. Mm -hmm. I I feel like especially if they get to add another uh another resource orders, filter another set of cards again. Here we do have a PG here right now. Discarding a poison in paradise. Okay, so you know that like there's one less likely to come in unless your opponent has that uh secondo. So we see a trigger come down, it looks like, which is nice. Looks like to be a heal. Really handy here. So, so what check. we were saying about the crit, you're getting rid of that crit obscade is going to come to fruition as well, which is nice. Alright. So that PG's gone now. Thinking about uh, attack patterns here. Do we try to... Oh, he's using a blitz order. I love seeing Freezing Wave and Ava. It's just one of those cards that, like, obviously... It was designed for like Ava and Archite, but 
but every time Freezing Wave comes down, I just love seeing it come down, like, in Rotovisor, in Dayusha. It's just, like, oh. it's just so much value. It is, indeed. So for the people at home who might not know what it does, uh, for every of your orders that is currently uh, rested, it gives 10k to one of your chosen units on board as a grade 2 blitz order. So you can use it on your grade 2 turn, which is... A lot more handy than you would think, especially into a meta of archetypes that have very strong grade two turns. Mm -hmm. Especially for decks like, especially specifically Archite, who can yeah. rest both of her orders on the grade two turn and just have like cool, you know, especially going first, like, oh, you're hitting me on a 20k shield and my fronts aren't active? Here's a blitz. <laughs> Actually, how do you feel about Archite though? Because I feel like people are just gushing over Shoji and stuff mm -hmm. and, and Lugie, and nobody's really been talking about Archite. How do you feel about it right now as a brand gate enthusiast? I think the deck is really, really fun and like balancing out the ratios of like, you know, you want to have a critical mass of monsters with different names so you can like keep cycling through them all. I think that's a really interesting challenge. But when it comes to actually playing the deck, you know, I'm willing to admit that like, as much as I love watching the deck have function, it does feel a bit weak. Like it has really strong pressure. It's got good number lines. It, but the problem is that fundamentally you decompress yourself, which means that at no point are you ever really threatening lethal out of nowhere outside of like the grade three monster that can gain a crit. So oh, a lot of the I times see. your opponent just like, you, know, you give them so much breathing room compared to like Doji, which is like turn three. Oh, I'm attacking you six times and they all hit over defensive. Oof. Because I remember with the old Archite, the, all of your extra copies used to go to the bottom and that can not shuffle, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so you could kind of stack your deck in, a, in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's whereas great. the new Archite actually shuffles, which is slightly a downside. It means that you, know, you are... The triggers that you find like are definitely more potent because like you know, you're doing minus 5k to your opponent, you've got like plus 15k to everything being called, mm -hmm. but it's also at the same time you're trading like that you're trading that advantage elsewhere like old archite felt a lot like di whereas new archite feels a lot more like dimension police if that makes sense uh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. where it's like power lines very good um like value but it can feel a little bit middling if you don't really have exactly to like you're that. never you're never burying your opponent under card advantage which i think is very important in this current standard format mhm mm mhm mm like, I feel like deck impression could be very... is It's probably, like, one of the most important things for a lot of decks right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, this is a topic that we were just discussing this on an another video previous with another guest commentator, but there's this discussion nowadays of, you know, sure, over-trigger sucks, but there's other things in you know, in Vanguard, like, other points of variance, like, oh, I bricked, or, you know, oh, like, you just double crit me out of nowhere. And I think a lot of players, like, don't... Because of how overwhelming the OT is... They don't really appreciate that, like, yeah, you know, other th like, things that happen, like, I don't see my combo pieces, like, you know, Archite never sees the third order, or Doji never sees, like, the, the thing that calls itself from bind. And, like, small things like that, that maybe go under the radar, I think decks that can, like, really, really strongly compress, like Lukia, is often gets passed over because, you know, people are like, oh, he just hit the OT. Because a lot of people just sort of, like, get very disheartened. It deflates them emotionally, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really think about, oh, should I have should I have played to my outs here? Should I have, like, played with giving my chances? Like, say, for example, you're playing in a matchup and you put your opponent to, like, five damage when you're at, like, three. Or you think, well, oh, this is pretty good. I put myself to advantage here. But your hand is, like, super low, and every single CB that you give your opponent is an extra, like, two or three attacks, and you just gave them all of that resources. Exactly. Especially if you don't, like, look to finish him that turn, you put yourself in a scenario that you didn't, like, that you could have circumvented if you just paid attention to the, to the game state, to the flow, the damage, the triggers, and all that stuff. All those things you need to account for. Yeah, like, you know, we see here that uh, on his first attack, Chicken Winning sh chose to use the right Abilio to boost the Combine Rusher, forcing Shirataka to take that fifth damage. But in the same way, you can realize that, okay, if my opponent, like, my opponent expects me to call the crit obscadade, and they're at four, so the crit obscadade is already lethal, so they're going to be incentivized to take the combine rush attack anyway. So maybe, like, you know, maybe I save the Rider Billy, or maybe I go for the grade two obscadade instead. Like, things like that sort of, again, playing to your outs in that sort of sense. And 
I think that's a really good line of play from Shirataka there. Like, you know, Noriko, like, okay, I'm going to take this damage. He's committed his Radabilio. The ops get that comes out is going to be tiny, guardable, and then I just need to worry about this uh, Vanguard swing. Yeah. Especially since, like, most of Vanguard is, like, a bit of a numbers game, yeah? Like, mm -hmm. you you could think of, like, ah, well, it's 30k, it's maybe, like, uh, maybe two cards to guard, or maybe, like, a 30, uh, you know, 20k shield, sure. But it's still, like, a, it's a huge investment, and not everybody's gonna have the 20k shield. So, like, attacking with 30 is, like, relatively safe. Yeah, Chicken Winnish there, hitting another blank drive check. Definitely feels rough. So that is gonna be a 38k obscurade with the crit. Again, very guardable. Yeah, and then the one on the other side, I think, is going to be 25, 38 as well. Mm -hmm. And then with the Persona right turn, don't forget. Uh, I think I was counting that because it's 15 base, uh, uh, 15, 20 from 25, pers 25 oh, from Persona, yeah. right, 13 boost. Yeah, so yeah, these numbers are super easy to guard there, you know, even without hitting a defensive for Shirataka, which I think is going to be handy. Like, he is on 5, but again, playing around that heal. Using the energy cycler. And yeah, the critical thing is, as we saw, the fact that Shirataka had to call his awaking to the front row last turn implies that he's low on combo pieces. Uh, looks like he's considering intercepting here. For the extra 5k shields. Mm -hmm. No, it's actually, well, the skill is active. So yeah, exactly. Anyway. It's called from the order, from the research that was played, so... I think that's another reason why he would have maybe considered the Grade 2 Obscurate, because now if Shirataka wants to keep that Arrestor alive, he needs to guard it twice, which is... Obviously, he lets it go on the first attack, so the second one would be quote-unquote wasted, but it was just added like that little bit of extra pressure, whereas the crit is... The crit doesn't make a difference to lethal when your opponent's already on 5, unless you expect them to like heal or something. Okay... Do seem to be a bit of a rewrite here or stride now into I think that's an amnesty. Into an amnesty again. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, losing the awaking means that he's the only thing he can lock with the on stride skill is the Makanis. Mm. And he definitely wants to do that to get at least one of those you know, 10k intercepting obscurates off the board. So we are gonna see that happen. Yeah, unless he sees a prelude of Genesis, but we don't know if he happens to have that yet. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Chicken Winnish's hand is massive because he was able to like counter blast on for Ava, you know, Persona Ride, like such another order. There's just so much passive plusing in Ava that yeah, you know, nine, ten cards in hand. You have to assume there's at least a PG in one of those, even though he burned one last turn. I think we actually saw one being drive checked, so you have to like play around probably play around two PGs realistically. That's it looks really like a third Mikani in the front row. Yeah, it's just going to be look like it's going to be an attacker here. He might end up pushing up the the other Makani, or he might use this as on strike for locking himself right now, since he does need to unlock something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even Valtrosa would be really, really good right now. But it looks like he's not committing much. No, we're just going to go Vanguard Swing. Only two attacks this turn. Yep, it's gonna go for the unlock here on his own unit. It's gonna give the extra power to the other units he controls here. The Mechani. Mm hmm Gonna discard. Trigger. Um like now he's contemplating whether or not he swings into the grade to upscrade or he just gives the damage. I mm. Looks like he's going to go for a PG here. Mm -hmm. I think swinging into the Grey 2 was really, really smart, because uh, he'll only have one counter blast play on the next turn if he does that, which means that he then has to spend that counter blast on either the Ava or the Obscurade. Sorry, Ava or Combine Russia, but not both. And you force him to like use all that extra hand he's built to make a board instead of doing anything else. How do you feel about Combine Russia being back off the ban list, by the way? Or sorry, off of the restriction list? I'm, I'm glad, like, I I think Common Rush is a really cool card. I like seeing it whenever it comes up. It's just one of those like nice things like, oh yeah, this guy's back again. It's just it's one of those cards that is very rarely ever bad. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting to be in Ava, because like Ava cut Combine Russia for a time because not because of like of the restriction or space reasons, because it just consumed that counter blast that they didn't really couldn't afford. 
But now that with Immigra and Poison Paradise, the deck now has so much more resources, it can just freely do whatever it wants. And Combine Russia is just, you know, one of those really efficient slots. It always has been one of those really efficient slots. And you know, it coming back just shows that the deck's really like streamlined even further in what it's trying to do. Okay, so off of the world of blue research lab here, uh, I was going to get a second now. Which I assume is going to recycle the poison in paradise. And I think he's all out. Mm -hmm. And then I think he forgot to energy blast me from Immigra, which we are literally about to see now. Yep, so that's going to be, it's going to place that over there instead. He's just changing a bit of the orientation here. Yep, that way he doesn't need to... Uh remake an attacker for when the Immigral goes into soul. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So he's going to use skill of Immigral. Oh no, he's thinking of looking at the top five. Five with Ava. Compression is good. Just deck thin into lethal. Oh man, Immigral is so good, man. <laughs> oh god for a time this card was a very hot commodity mm -hmm. and still really important yeah it arguably is. still is exactly interesting to know here that uh, it looks like he's playing two copies of experiment result henceforth because you saw one going to damage earlier on uh i think that's fair it's it's searchable off a of poison and there's very few matchups that actually care about retiring like most of them do either too many multi-attacks for them to to care about what your upscales are doing on the board and most of them even if they do retire it's like incidental mm -hmm. so it's a good heads up that like a lot of people now are just using the archite research order and then using the top end of the world research lad order and they're still playing at least a couple copies of henceforth yeah you know at least to round it out Something I really want to see here is he's left his monster researchers st uh, stood. Is he going to rest them and just like bind PGs, effectively bind PGs from his drop zone just to threaten that 50k freezing wave? That's oh, a... true, because it gets power for every card in your uh, order zone, yeah? Yeah, for everyone that's rested. So like, he's like, even if he doesn't have the freezing wave, I think that's a really, really strong bluff to make. Just tell your opponent like, you have to play around this potential 50k shield no matter what. Oh, looks like he uh, he heard you. He's uh, going here with the Seiko Nell just for 18. It's a bit of a poke. So no, not resting the monster order is an interesting one. So we'll see how they respond. So it looks like it was guarded. Now comes in the Poison Paradise. I think he's got one more crit left. Yeah, so there's the crit obscurate. Uh, one thing to note that both OTs have not been checked yet. Mm, yeah, neither has been seen, actually, I think. So a checked OT here from Ava will definitely be backbreaking. Oh my god. I think there's like maybe what? I think 15 cards, 12 cards left in deck, maybe? Yeah. It's going to be 28. That one's going to be 38 plus a gigantic boost in the back row there. We've lost for 13, 30, 38, same amount really. 38, 38 plus giant booster, I think like somewhere in the 60 era, I feel, right? Yeah, so Radabilia will gain plus 15. So it's going to be 23k booster on its own. So boosting a 33k Obscudade makes it 58, uh, 56, plus the 5k from Ava makes it 61. Mm -hmm. Which is definitely PG, like it's actually OT to OT guards, unless the triggers come down. So, but I think that looks like P. About CPG. Uh, I looks to be no, Elementaria here. I think yeah, I think that is Sanctitude, which is effectively the same thing. And I think that's I think that's the cat actually twenty. No, I don't think that. I think that's an Empyro. So front and cat oh. is forty k shield, which puts him at fifty three versus twenty eight, which is, uh, that is OT to pass. Yeah. There's the front. front. OT? Nope, just a crit. Okay. Unless it was it 2 to pass? Two, 220k shield should be 40k, right? No, it was. Okay, it was 2 to pass. 
So yeah, no, we'll just take the two damage, and that will be the game. So wow. yeah, Ava taking it over Messiah. I think that was... Was that not 40k shield? Am I miscounting somewhere? So 15, 20... Unless it was a crit trigger. If it was a crit trigger, then it's two to pass. It might have been, yeah, you're absolutely correct. So... Yeah, we see there, Shirataka on Messiah is going to lose to Chicken Winning on Ava. So Chicken Winning going to get that sixth win for the Owl Coop, just solidifying their championship run. <laughs> but congratulations Ooh. to them. Congratulations to mm -hmm. uh, all the Absolutely. players who took part. Unfortunately, uh, we... Uh, well, no, that's we actually, sorry, that's game one, actually. It's the best of three. We completely forgot. It is. It is the oh, best of three. Yeah. I forget, top eight, top eight was uh, best of three. Yeah, so both players are going to take a quick break there. So uh, the loser does get to choose whether they go first or second in game two. So as the Messiah player, I'm pretty confident that uh, Shirataka will choose to go second. Yes, <laughs> he should. Like, as you see, like, this kind of showed... Um, this gave, gave a very good showing as to, like, what you can expect. Uh, mm -hmm. whatever could do to you in in the early stages of the game uh Amagrar early wavy loss early got an early draw got an early like 13k booster hitting for 21 on like your grade two turns is is very dangerous yeah absolutely it's one of those ones again where like it's kind of that weird junction of messiah now has the tools to early rush and they want to early rush but it's also dangerous to early rush because you risk, because you're being hit for turn two with like Immigral Combine Rush, and it's like, whoa, what happened? Yeah, 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 especially since you can just sort of discard and uh, you filter throw so much through your deck. And and Ava, sadly enough, is a deck that you don't really have a lot of space for the cyclers, but being able to just feel very safe and discarding almost anything from your hand at Ava is one of the biggest caveats that a lot of people are like saying this is still one of the. This is one of the decks that still scares people. It's one of the decks you need to respect if you see it in an event. I think both of these decks are still need to be respected if you see them at events, because mm -hmm. they just have that strong range of flexibility. Like, obviously, at the time of recording, Shoujo Doji is one of the best decks in the game right now, but it, you know, it's going to do that one thing, and it's going to do that one thing really, really well. Whereas Ava and Messiah can do like loads of different things very you know, separately. Like, they can play it slow, they can play it fast, they can try lane, they can stall. And that's just something that I think is what makes it that if you're not an experienced player and you don't know what each deck is, like, you don't know what the, if you can't read what the deck is telegraphing at any given moment and respond to it accordingly, you will just, like, you know, land on the wrong side of the coin flip and just get absolutely battered. I think that's something where, you know, when it comes to, like, a BCS where, you know, you have to, like, every decision has to be, like, correct. Yep, it's one of those right. ones that yeah is me makes or breaks the championship so that's definitely the case I, I i kind of um i had to chuck a little bit where we if you read and that sort of like sticks with me <laughs> like uh re reading is a, a basic skill that most players including myself tends to lack a lot so uh trust it's it's fine and talking about reading uh the dutch tests mm -hmm. or for uh, people who want to be attending BCSs uh, this coming season. The Dutch tests are up. Um, yep. It is the 1st of September, so make sure you all learn how Harry and Dream Unicorn work works. <laughs> God, I still find that question one of the funniest ones still. Uh, outside of that, it, I, it's fun. It's, it's a fun experience. You become a provisional judge. You... Uh, work your way up the ranks, you earn prizes, you meet new people, you meet new players, you get to work alongside the game that you love. Give it a shot. See how much you know about the game. <clears throat> okay, so players are setting up for game two. So Chicken Winnish is 1-0 up. Do you think either of these players will like, you know, what do you think is going through their minds? Are they going to be thinking about what's going to change? Like, what do I need to adjust? Or like, you know, or is it going to be a case of Especially, I guess, in Chicken Winnings' case, like, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Like, you know, Dashira Tarkin needs to, like, okay, reevaluate my game plan, think about how I'm guarding and things like that. I think he probably needs to reevaluate how he can guard here and what units he prioritizes in attacking with. Like, does he want to commit, um, especially if he's going second, does he want to give 
uh, a full grade two upscaled opening board like what he did again and lose his board like that? Or does he think, well, if I could commit like maybe two columns, I'm good. Mm -hmm. That's that's a possibility. He can do like a very slow and steady sort of damage control like until he gets ramped up or he doesn't say, well, okay, if he doesn't see Imgrar, it's going to be over for me anyway. Yeah, a few things to note as well. I, I wasn't paying super close attention because it's <coughs> A, quite hard to see his small screen, and B, his Discord notifications keep blocking it as well. But I didn't see any safers come down from Shirataka's side of the board as well. And that's one of those cards that, if your opponent is going to upscale your board, having that 10 like cooldown safer, it's a 10k beat stick because it gains 2k when placed, and then it sits in the, you know, the effect to add a card back when you discard it activates in both rearguard circle and drop. So your opponent attacking it, like, doesn't impact you at all. You still get to Energy Blast 3, add back your Mastojas. I feel like that's a card you definitely want to see early that will help you like get that early aggro down without losing too much. It really depends on whether or not he's even playing that ratio or like a very old... Like, do you do you happen to have like lists of what they're playing, actually? Uh, I don't have their deck list, no. One of the things about VPL is that you know we allow players to like, change their decks and deck lists and like, whatever in between weeks and games. You know, just like keep it casual, keep it like you know, people get the chance to play what they like. So uh, okay, fair, fair, fair. yeah, everything we know about the list, we just have to infer from what we see here. Uh, it looks like another whiffed turn one research. Oh man! Wow. Good if time. I if I had a dollar for every time I saw an Ava player whiff turn one research, I would have enough to be able to buy my own Ava deck. <laughs> I think I've seen in. One of our uh, members of my team of the neighborhood watch, uh, they were like super. They're super into ever themselves. Uh, I've seen Starling resolve maybe one <laughs> research order at any oh. given point in time. <laughs> yeah, out of any of their matches. Yeah, I think it I was, was playing against some friend of mine from locals a few weeks ago, and he goes, "Turn one, Ava order whiff. Turn two, research whiff. Turn three, blue lab looks it for a minute." And shows me a hand of five obscurades. Uh oh no. <laughs> uh, those are one of the worst situations you can have because you you don't even like have your second else to even cycle back into your deck. Oh, mm -hmm. and talking about obscurades, having to discard one here. I mean that's not too bad. Obviously, you can second else and it back. It, it doesn't matter. You can always use also use poison to bring it back from drop zone as well. Yep. I think that's another strength of like poison in paradise is that you know you don't need to rely on results henceforth to get your obscurates back anymore because you just pull them from drop. Mm -hmm. I think it looks there from Shirataka's side of the board. It's just a a Mekani and his grade one. So interestingly enough, he swung with both of them, and yet Chicken Winning is on zero damage. So he's playing a bit more aggressively here to like you know guard in the early, just so he can afford to like no guard the Vanguard swings and just get some cheeky like saves from shield. That's for sure. I I wonder what we do here with this wavy uh, column. I think, is it under Vanguard, you feel, depending on what his hand is? Quite possibly. I mean, in an ideal world, you are you get to a position where you have two Immigras, one in the front, one in the back, and the one in the front is what goes into Soul to Spear Ride, and then mm. the one in the back just sits behind Vanguard being a 10k booster. True. Okay. I, I get that logic, yeah. That's fair, that's fair. So yeah, we're just uh, going to make goes... it a column on the side, which I don't dislike. We'll see how he guards. Guards aggressively. Combine Russia, nice. Mm -hmm. And then 18k magic numbers, show us another trigger, or are you going to swing to that Makani? Nope, we're going to swing Vanguard, and we'll take it. So a heads up thing you could probably do here is maybe swing into um, Imgrar. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I really like that line of play. Yeah, just right up to grade two, pull back the Makani, and then Vanguard into Imgrar. Like leave your opponent on zero damage so they can't use Ava to like top X, add one, and then deny the Imgrar so now they need to waste three more energy to go into the poison. But let's see what they opt into here. Looks like they commit like a whole side column just now. Yeah, that is a Valtrosser. I mean, if this is gonna like this could work out well as well, just like rushing your opponent to three and just like you know, getting that early tempo onto the board. 
But again, as we've seen, you've got that great top skill that can really heavily punish. And again, last game, Shirataka didn't even use those great, the Valtrosa to intercept. So he lost, like, he basically lost 5 to 10k shield for free there. That looks... I can't, I can't tell what that looks like from here, but... <laughs> at best, it's another grade 2 body. How do you feel about this matchup, though, overall? I, I think it is you... Messiah favored. Like, Ooh. I think so. I think if the Messiah player, like, plays really smart and can, like, bait the Ava player into, like, pushing unnecessarily, they can, like, really pull ahead and just, like, overwhelm Ava with crit scaling. Sorry, with crest scaling. Oh, true, true. The defensive front coming in there. Suddenly he makes attacking to the Immigrar less viable, and yeah, we are just going to see a pass. Yeah, defensive front trigger here is a little bit tough. Plus Combine Rusher. Ooh, what did, what did you do here? Let's see. Oh, it, and it's another thing if he has like a third order. Mm -hmm. I still think you want to use Ava's Axe rather than Combine Rusher, because like, you know, deck thinning is just always ideal. And, you know, worst case scenario, Ava's Counter Blast 1 can just find you a body to mate with as well. Provided that the Blue Lab doesn't make find you a body to attack with. Alright, talking about Blue Lab, here's the activation of it. There's Obscurate! Very solid. It'll be worth... It was worth mentioning to be interesting here. Is what body can he make to replace that Emigra with as an attacker? Because you want to save the Crit Obscurate afterwards. Because you still have the Crit Obscurate first. Shirataka is like incentivized to take the damage, hit defensives, deny the heal. And but then the wavy loss, I think the wavy loss will gain the 5k. Looks like he's calling another wavy loss here. Yep. So the Imagra comes out. This one with the plus 2k, so it's now gonna be a magic number booster for the Vanguard. But your opponent's on grade 2, so it's not actually magic numbers yet. So there's actually a slight argument that that. Immigra should have been behind the Obscurate instead of behind the Vanguard. Yeah, to make it a 33 column at least. Yeah. Because the thing as is now, like, the Wave Loss still hits 13 on its own, so it still attacks into the 5. Like, sure, your opponent gets the chance to use a 5k intercept, but that is something. Especially if you aren't planning on making the Grade 2 Obscurate off of Poison in Paradise. Well, since he's playing a little bit more reserved, I mean, we do still see like two side columns here, so there's a possibility he might actually still go for the Great Two Obscured, just like last game. Mm -hmm. So there's the right ability. That would be explain why he didn't put the Immigra on the side. Fair, fair. And there's Great Two Obscured. So this is one will not be attacking the front row, but it's still a body. <clears throat> I guess you can opt to give the Great Two Obscured five k power to make it twenty k to force fifteen from hand. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a pretty smart line, because then your opponent can't even like double intercept. They need to double intercept and throw a 5k on top. But it looks like we will be giving it to the crit upscale to confirm damage, I guess. Mm -hmm. I also don't hate that either, you know, just being like, you know, PG this or else. But yeah, we are going to see the double intercept there, you know, nice efficient usage of shield from Shirataka. Gonna get here, I possibly just go for the crit upscale, no, wouldn't I? Yeah, I think that's correct. Because your opponent's on one, they're going to be incentivized to no guard the vanguard swing and hope you don't get crits because they need to deal with the crit obscurates. And then that's your chance to like, hit triggers and just run away with the game. Because the important thing as well is that they're both on one damage. So both heals are still alive. Like, there was an yeah. argument for Shirataka to take the Grey 2 obscurate attack, but then knowing that, that then gives... Chicken winning the chance to uh, call out the Grade 2 Obscurate to deal with those Interceptors. Heal oh. massive. Boy, that is tough. And a poison here. But not a crit, so it takes one damage. But not a defensive. Does put him on two damage here, so both of these are crit. Potentially put into four, and the other one could potentially put from four to six. So he has to be very careful here how he wants to guard. Probably guards the small one and takes the big one, I'd expect. Because going up to four when your opponent's on zero does feel really bad. I'm just counting numbers here. So Radabilia is only going to gain... Uh, it's only going to gain 5k 
because there's total grade is five, so it's five k five k for five, ten k for seven, fifteen k for nine, I believe. Or it might be the other end. Might be might be one lower. I'm not too sure. But either way, this is fairly large. And I think I think Shirataka took that and went to first one took went to four and is now PG in the second one. Oh really? I guess with what how they had looked, they had no real other choice anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is brutal. Having to burn all those cards this early on. Especially like something with PGs into upscales, it's going to be very, very, very tough. But at least now we do get rid of one of the upscales. We just get to pick apart the board this turn. Yep. We'll see whether or not his hand is full of combo pieces. If he has to call the Awakening to the front row again. I think that was also another factor that may have lost, I think... Probably lost share attack of the game there in game one, like not being not having that awakening constantly on the board to provide 10k pressure and always having a lock target. And yeah, I think we see that awakening to the front row again, which is really brutal. Yeah, because we haven't seen any arresters, any of those yet either. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like not being able to get five attacks on the first ride to like fight back and whittle away Ava's hand is absolutely makes things really hard. There's an arrestor and a sacrifice, it looks like. So he's got the rest of the board all set up. Mm hmm. A bit of extra power to the Vanguard here from the sacrifice. Kind of nice. And again, I like what he's done. He knows that he's only going to be drawing three cards off this GB2. So he does need to activate Makani and he gets to keep it as an 8k booster. Let's get a swing here. Lock board. Meanwhile, chicken winning, guarding, guarding the attack he can guard, which is very smart. Can't play around the heal because your opponent's on four, and you like you're know, going up to five for free is kind of silly. But he's just gonna instead like hang on to that damage lead and make the most out of it. And I think that separates a lot of the skillful players from um, from players who just play based on impulse. I realized because I, I I do the same thing myself sometimes, where I'm like, oh well, I. Uh, I can take a little bit of damage here. I can um I can let myself to go to like two damage and then I'm an instantly at six and I'm like how how did that how did happen? that happen? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially where you don't like tempo uh like keep tempo with your opponent to figure out like okay what is the worst case scenario that could possibly happen to me and play around it. Yeah. So the crit comes in from a no guarded amnesty swing. Defensive heal is nice. The heal doesn't activate, but the defensive does make the arrest the column a bit easier to guard. The Awaken column is quite a hard because it got the plus 20k from Amnesty and the 10k from itself. So it's a 55k column plus an 8k boost. So I'd expect you take this to go to 3 and then find a way to guard the Arrester. I I highly agree here, but it, with 4 cards in hand, it's going to be a little bit tough. I mean, you do have a confirmed Persona, right? But you don't have an order. Mm -hmm. I guess what you could try to aim for here is hit a defensive. No hit here. Uh, the but... blue lab actually being damaged. So we do discard the second poison. I think one was discarded for Rydak already. So there's yep. like only one more left in rotation. And Sekundan... so Kelndale is in a damage zone as well. So we don't even know if they're playing two. Mm -hmm. Does make things a lot harder. That's definitely the case. Contemplating how he's going to do this here. Yeah, and another really difficult junction to you have to make now is that you want to play the order before you activate Ava's act so you can have one more card to look at. But in this scenario, he wants now to push that Immigra in the back into Sol before he plays the order so that he can make a fresh Immigra behind the Vanguard to be that 10k boost the magic numbers we were talking about earlier. So he's like, he kind of has to activate Ava to look at top three only. And then play the and then Immigra into Soul to ride, and then order to make out a new Immigra to be a 10k booster. But no, we're gonna see the order first. Just to make an attacker, I believe. Yeah. Because I think is there not a second Immigra in Drop Zone? I think there is. Oh no, it might be in Soul. Unless he Soul blasted out earlier for something. Actually, I think he did Soul Blast at the turn previous to use Blue Labs Act Effect. So yeah, the Immigra probably is in drop. Whoa, Whoa! Calling the point. That's his. That's his third or fourth poison. Because we've seen one discarded just now. One in the soul. Yeah. I think that's his last poison. 
Uh, un unless I miscounted. I thought we saw a Discord for Rydeck, no? That's what I thought as well. Unless We could also just see the Secondal here. That's also reasonable. Yeah, but there's one of Damage Jersey playing too. Oof, he's gonna call over the original Sakon, the Immigra there. He could also just not go into Poison. He could also just activate Ava, like on attack, Counter Blast, and Soul Blast 1. Oh my god, so old school ever? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you lose the Persona Ride power, which is pretty backbreaking. So, okay. Yeah, we're blind. I'm blind then. Okay, he did have the last one, sure. <laughs> but again, that's still the last one. That's, that's kind of dangerous. I guess it's because the top five had to be like just triggers plus poison, and you need to at least filter mm, one. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's then like, you don't find an immigrant in the next two turns, and your opponent survives this. It suddenly becomes a lot more difficult to play the game. And of course, Shirasaki is on four damage. So they could also just quote unquote explode. We'll see how this plays out. Looks like he's trying to aim for that right now here. It's gonna rest them on orders. Soul blasting the Imagar. So get 5k to the rear guard poison. poison. Interesting. I feel like with the way the things have played out, I think there was a world where he could have afforded to use poison first and then blue lab. To pull out the 10k Immigrant behind the Vanguard and a Combine Russia on the side. Oh, yeah, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially with them having uh, two extra CB open here, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Grade 2 Ops is going to come out, so no crit pressure for lethal. It's kind of dangerous, like, because now you're in a position where it looks like Shirataka guarded the first attack as well, so they could potentially, like, if you don't check crits, they can just no guard this Grade 2 Ops swing. Uh, it depends, since they, um, they're on two right now, right? A well-placed crit could force out a little bit of pressure out of their hand. No, I think Shirataka's on four damage. Oh my. Yeah, so you definitely want to guard the Vanguard swing. And then... That- oh, that Obscate doesn't have a crit on it, because it's the one from last turn, actually. Yes, correct. Okay, so this- this turn is actually a little bit more survivable than you might think. Of course, Persona Ride is still active, and this is still a 28k Vanguard coming in. So it's not like you're out of the woods. And yeah, Radabilio now will be the 15k booster. What do you have? That's a front. Puts you on 33 to 28, which is one to pass. Intercept is still one to pass. 5k more. Makes it okay. two to pass. Energy farm here. Draw a card. Yeah, two to pass. Blank. Crit. crit. Okay. Crit. So now you have to guard wherever the crit goes, because that's lethal. Mm -hmm. But then that great to obscurate is now also attacking your arrester. And the fact that, again, the previous turn, we saw the Awakening being called out to the front row means that he's unlikely to have any extra combo pieces in hand unless he drew them off the GB2. So losing this arrest is still kind of rough. Because does he... Do they even play Prelude? I would imagine you have at least one in the deck. There's no reason not to have it. We'll see. Like... There's no way you can... There's no way you have enough hand to guard the Awake, the Arrester, and the Vanguard. And... PG this Obscadade. So I think, like, if you're going to do anything, you guard the Arrester, take this one damage, and then try and PG the Obscadade? The crit one? Unless they're on somehow on five, we may have missed, but I don't think they are. So how big is this Great to Obscadade? It is 25, 25 plus 13, 38. So yeah, I'm going to let the Arrester go, and then this one has the crit, show us the PG. Yeah, let's see. It's 23. 
43. No, it's not. Is it 30? Oh, yeah. Because they have the trigger as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. So PG comes down, and Shirataka gets one more turn. But again, oh, like, okay. Ava's on three, and the difficulty here is that with how much they've compressed, they're also guaranteed to hit at least, like, probably hit some defensives. Alright, but not let's not count out Shiritaka here yet. Could be going for a discard. Trying to figure out what to stride into between Amnesty or Excelix. Either of them can launch uh, upwards to five attacks here. Mm -hmm. But it depends on what the angle can be, especially since the front row is completely empty. It's barren. There is a sacrifice in the back row. And a Makani for you to lock with Vanguard skill. So Excelix, if you have it, will still be the five attack turn. If you, especially if you can't find self lockers to go into Amnesty with. Mm -hmm. The question is, does he have the alter ego? I think he did. That does look like an Excelix to me. Or it could be an Amnesty. I don't know. Okay, no, that's Amnesty. It's got that red tint to the background. So no Excelix. Right, because he discarded the Mastodge. There's the draw off the Mastodge. Who's uh, who's your favorite messiah? Which form is your favorite messiah? Ooh, hmm. Because for most of the people at home who might not know, I mean, obviously they know, but uh, Ben here is a bit of a, a messiah connoisseur. Yeah, yeah, I I am a general Link Joker enjoyer in general. Uh, I think my favorite form is actually Basaltus. Ooh, mine used to be Flagulet. Mm, just for that... the, the hair, the hair design. Yeah, I, I came really close to saying Flagulet as well, but the reason Basaltus takes it for me is because A, it draws a card, which the only other messiah that draws a card is Integral, and B, it is a core part of that 9 attack, 500k shield combo that you know, still makes up 90% of my YouTube views. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, I think uh, Integral... Integral has been a pretty good alternative win condition for, for a bit, but I hope in the future that uh, Arc-type-specific support gets a little bit of love again, like mm -hmm. how we used to be back in the day. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we've just come in off the back of Shiranui Summer, like... <laughs> of the dominance of Luard and Shiranui, and you know, those decks are still arguably good for what it's worth, they're just not tier 0 anymore, but no, no. I wouldn't mind down the line, especially now that we have Night Rose and Harry, for, to have all the, the stride decks, at least Chronojet and Messiah at least, to get some new strides. I would not be against that. Me either, but I would like a lot more archetype specific uh, guard. Mm -hmm. um, extending extensions like or or having the same thing like how we have with some archetypes that have like incidental 10k shield or 15 shield while you're being played like in the um night rose it one of the shades i think it's rune shade uh i think it's rune shade that she currently has like plus 10k shield or plus 15k shield based on how many cards you have in your drop zone mm. i like that i yeah. like that Especially compared to the Grey 2 that came in the Chronojet Stride deck, you know, the one was like, oh, on Intercept, Soul Blast 1 gained 10k shield. It's like, it's a significant upgrade in quality. <laughs> yes, very much so. Uh, and especially since you have um, Night Rose herself, she's, I think she's really, really, really tame. So I'm, I'm happy that her being a, a, a standard 3 attack deck and then later a 5 attack deck is a good way of balancing an archetype mm -hmm. i just hope that they didn't course correct it too much that it'll be too underpowered and then harry would be uh meta dominant because it's i think it's one of the free free mo free form decks next to i think both of them are like toolbox oriented archetypes yeah that can get very explosive and very dangerous based on whatever nation support they get yeah i mean if raziel's told us anything it's that if Raziel recycling Selgon proves to us that, you know, playing it slow and just drawing a bunch of cards is really, really strong, and that's basically what Night Rose does, so I expect it to be fairly solid as well. Mm. Pile works, just pile. Just <laughs> Absolutely. 
I mean, all, all we're missing is a green version of Wisdom of the World, right? Oh, God, stop. <laughs> stop. Wilson, <laughs> rude. Heavy guard coming in here from Chicken Winning. So Shirataka was able to mount a pretty solid defense, but yeah, there's the Freezing Wave. Again, worth mentioning that uh, Chicken Winning chose not to put a monster from drop into the order zone with the fourth research. Obviously, the extra 10k shield didn't make a difference here, but it's one of those like you know small percentage optimizations that you definitely want to keep in mind. I guess it might be something that you just don't really often do. Because I, I think he would have probably done it if he had like accounted for it, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. But, I mean, he only had like four or five cards at the end of all of that, so you know, maybe one extra trigger from Shirataka could have made that 10k shield matter. Oh, definitely. But yeah, we've now seen all four poisons out of the deck. So unless Chicken Winnish finds us a condol here, I'm not sure what other gas he has. So there's henceforth. Are we going to pull out an Imagra? Even if you don't superior ride, it's still a 10k booster, which is not awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not having blue lab to search for the condol is also really painful. Oh, it looks like he's actually thinking about it. Wait a minute. There's the combine rusher. So now, yeah, Ava's gonna top five. This basically needs to find the condol here because not having persona ride is there. It is. Hey. Wow. Shows yeah. it, even though it has the hand. But yeah, we're gonna hit the condol. We're gonna put back the poison. And I think Shirataka's chances of winning this game just went out the window. Uh, I thought most people were actually just playing like one though. That's that's tough. That's yeah, two really is. Good. I've seen a few lists playing two, but it's definitely more common to only be running one. But yeah, it definitely worked out for him this game. You cannot complain. No, definitely not. We get the filter order here. So another two cards plus Persona Ride. There is a chance of drawing into a trigger, but that is. That is the chance you take with playing a very filter-oriented archetype. Yeah. Like, definitely the Persona Ride power is what makes a huge difference here. Like, without it, the Secondal would just, you know, he would have to boost the Secondal and waste the Radio Bilio. The, uh, the Combine Rush is only going to be 28, 33 with a boost on its own. Whereas now, all of these numbers go from 1 to 2 card guard to PG or die. But now we get the call over the second though, I would expect. Because he could call it from drop zone anywhere. So he used henceforth to add the obscurate back to his hand. Oh, I guess he's thinking about like placement, I guess. Yeah. Like if you're gonna call I think calling the obscurate from hand over the second is totally fine, but no, we're just gonna attack with it actually. Let's not forget okay. to use root lab. 5k to this condo, so it is at least 23, asking for 15, no, 5k to Van, actually. So yeah, 18 there. Again, the Persona Ride making it so he doesn't have to boost and waste the Radio Bilio is huge. Me using 10k shield, that's two, two cards. Oh, wow. Very going to use a skill, Binding. See if there's any legal targets left in deck. Nope. He's going to have to call from the drop. This should be more than enough because I think there's still like one more grade three ups could aid and drop zone. There we go. Yep. But I think Shiratak is still only on three, like four damage. I think he may even have healed last time down to three. So there's a, there's a risk. There's an argumentative, understandable risk to no guard in this Vanguard swing. I'm just hoping double crit doesn't come down. Save yourself some shield and then guard this crit obscadade. If your opponent doesn't hit a crit at all, you can then take the combine rusher on top. Because like if you PG this and your opponent gets a crit, they just put it all into the obscadate, and that's now with like an unguardable column that you are now dead to. Which is obviously the risk. First right yeah. now he's thinking about it. That's 30, that's 43 side column. Mm -hmm. That also becomes super dangerous with a trigger, especially with a... 
Like, crit. if there was one you were going to take, it would be the Combine Rusher, unless he gets crits. Trying to zoom in and focus on what he's guarding with there. So, Sank has been gone. This is 28k on the Ava. With no guarding, no crits, that's exactly what you want to see. The heal does go off, because, yeah. So yeah, Shirataka did hit the heal last turn, Going, so he's on 3. So 1 damage from the Ava is massive, that means he can now afford to take the Combine Rusher as well to go to 5. Yeah, there's the power into Combine Rusher. Takes the 1, goes to 4. But now, he, he needs to have this PG for this Obscurate Order, this is still lethal. Because this is what, 28, 38... Uh... 38 plus 8 is 46, 46 plus 15 is 61, as before, yeah. So there's the PG. He's thinking whether or not he wants to attack the arrestor here. He's asking how many cards left in hand. Contemplating his attack pattern. What do you feel? Do we just push them for 5 here? Or do you swing rear? To give the chance I think you swing rear. Again, like, you know, we saw... Only four attacks last turn because of Valtrosa on the front row instead of a second arrest or whatever. The chance of Shirataka being able to like make a big offensive swing here is, if he goes after the arrest, is really low. You have to assume this is going at the arrest there because it was going at Vanguard. You would just snap take this and move on with life. <laughs> All right, now he's thinking, oh my god, do I commit like three cards out of my hand to guard this? That looks like another PG, actually. Oh, wow. I mean, that's fair, especially if that's like one of your only ways of uh, giving him a little bit of opposition here. I, I respect that. Yep. So we still don't have the alter ego, so we have to go to another amnesty. No stride skill, unfortunately, because that involves locking the sacrifice, which you kind of don't want to do. Do we have a way of making five attacks? Please have another arrester. Oh, no, that's a Valtrosa. That does get the arrested now. It could. It could. So he puts one back, and then top fives. Does he find one? I think that's a Mikani. So not quite. Yeah, so I'll charge one Mikani. I mean, he is also on GP4, so you're hoping that the just crest scaling will overwhelm Ava here. But again, Ava's on three. That heal was live. They can afford to take one or two damage. And they've got enough intercepts to deal with the rest of the board. And Ava's hands are usually rarely ever fake. I mean, yep. it can be, but it rarely ever is. One of the few brand decks to not have their hand clogged up with orders. Mm -hmm. Especially with all the filtering of their orders. I think that, like, in total, we have already six. Six of them on board. Seven. Mm -hmm. If you count the one in hand already. It's 15k shield on the board. We know there's another obscure in the hand. We know there's a heal in the hand. We've seen the PG also get drive checked last turn. So, yeah, Shiro's got a lot of work cut out for him to break through all of this and win. And again, as you keep saying, Ava compresses. Chance of hitting a defensive on that fourth or fifth damage, very high. Definitely the case. So, let's take a look at the attack pattern here sacrifice and. Am and a rester coming yep. in. It's going to be 43 because of the crest. Mm -hmm. it's gonna so, be... Pretty large, but still guardable. But again, I think if you're chicken winning share, you just probably take this. Bank on the defensive. PG the Vanguard swing. Deal with a Valtrosa unless he checks double crit somehow. 
think this is another OT gaming uh, situation possible. Oh, yeah. Might also just have the OT in hand and just guards with a 50k shield, which is also really efficient. Oh, yeah, that's actually, uh, it's a one card PG without having to sacrifice the return your hand to activate it. Exactly. Whoop. Trying to guard. So that's 30k shield, 35k shield, which puts you to 48, which is enough, yeah. The Combine Rusher coming in clutch with the 5k shield. So good, he's gonna be able to come back next turn too. Oh man. And yeah, not being able to use the Vanguard Stride effect means that there's only 10k being given to Amnesty here. So Leah Valtrosa there is gonna be only 48k total without triggers. Thinking whether or not he just eats here. No, I think you have to PG, because the chance of like just getting OT'd or crit out of the game is is way too high. Like, you can PG here and then force your opponent to put triggers onto the Arrester, which you can then, like, either Sanctitude or, like, OT Guard or whatever. And if your opponent hits the OT, they hit the OT. So, yeah, there's the PG get dropped. Let's see what he drive checks. Looks like a blank. Looks like three blanks. Oh, man. Situations like that is so rough. Yep. Revealing to show. Yep. So it means that Chicken Winning there can just no guard the Valtrosa swing. Can actually just no guard both swings here. Mm hmm. Just thinking whether or not he attacks the upscale, gets rid of an attacker. I don't see it changing much because there is a combined rush in drop zone. Mm hmm. And we know there's another upscale in hand as well. All attacking the upscale actually does is just put it back in the drop zone, ready to be called out with poison. Oh, but remember, there's no, there shouldn't be any more poison. Tonight. You're right, he's burnt through all the condors. Ooh! In fact, it's, in that case, it's better for him to leave the upscale on the board. Because otherwise, we know that Chicken Winning has the uh, research henceforth in his hand. He can use that to add the upscale that just gets retired back to hand and then has another upscale in hand to call off of the vanilla Ava. Oh, true, 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 true. Oh, defensive okay. front, nice. Definitely helps. And then 48. One damage, goes to the van, finds a crit, and that's okay. Goes to five. GB1, GB2 draws one card. That card needs to be putting in a lot of work here. Both players now at the very end of their figurative ropes. Oh my god, so much grinding here. I think right now there's about like five to six cards left right now. In Shiro's deck, yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be quite easy for um, Chicken Winnings to just... Even like poking one or two damage just makes it so that Shirataka can't attack with Vanguard. I mean, Shirataka's also on five damage, so the chance of him just outright losing is also pretty high. But yeah, Combine Russia comes out, Imagra comes out. The whole the gang's all here. And Ava just compresses even further. Look at the top five, see if they can dig for anything they don't really need. Seven cards in deck, six after resolving Ava. Chances of those being a trigger, astronomical. Plus, you have the henceforth to counter charge one and add back another obscadade. So, just past this turn, we are getting into the realm of him, of them knowing exactly what's left in their deck. Yeah. I mean, they already know, but then they'll know now. So, then they could start stacking like defensive heals potentially if they need to. Mm hmm. I think Chicken Winning there definitely needs to use the Henceforth because he needs the Soul to be able to use both Rider Bilio and Ava. Nope, we're actually just going to rest for Blue Lab first. Okay. No way. No. Okay, no, he's just using the, the Immigrant just for the Soul. 
Because now he can have the soul for both Ava and the Radabilio. Once he uses the research, that is. Ah, uh, fair, 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 fair. I'm not sure that... I don't think that was worth it. He gave up a 10k booster just to put 5k on the Obscadade. The, the, the math ain't mathin'. <laughs> it's, it's a... It's a 10k shield. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Like, you know your opponent's already burned, like, two PGs the turn previous. So just making the Vanguard column that little bit more unguardable, I think, goes a long, long way. I think with how they see it, it's it's all the same to them. It's like 50. Oh, oh never mind. mind. There's a Red Billio. Okay, that's that's good too. Yeah. But then you can't use both Red Billios and Ava. So the question is, where does... Which Red Billio are you going to not use? All right, coming here for 33. The other column is 51 max. Mm -hmm. This is not counting triggers, though. Mm -hmm. And Shirataka's hand looks like fairly healthy, but maybe not healthy enough. No, actually, it's a 5k less. It's um 46. Since he used 18, the henceforth, right? Uh, 18 plus 8 is 26. No, it is going to be 51. Uh, is it only like two orders rested there? Not three? Yeah, he rested the henceforth that he then put into soul. Uh, how much does... Uh, how much orders does Radabilia need? One uh, of total grade of seven. Oh, total... Ah. Uh. Yeah. So he will have the full gas. So chooses not to soul blast for the Vanguard Radabilio, because he was correctly assuming to walk into a perfect guard, which is the last perfect guard in Shiro's deck. So this is the crit obscadade. This is slightly scary. Oh no, no PG, just instead gonna cat. Okay, so Vanguard column is 18 plus 8 is only 26. So 20k shield makes a sturdy 3, which is 1 to pass. You can't want to pass an Ava, man. Not not this late into the game. No way. There is no... <laughs> like, you, you have to OT pass, because 2 to pass is effectively guaranteed. Like, 2 to pass is no guard right now, basically. Exactly. I think that is a 2 oh. to pass, though, it looks like. 2 to pass, yes. Yeah, he's... yeah Confirming two. 2 to pass. All van, all van, baby. Oh. Yep, yep, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Get, let's go, let's go, get, let's go. Bang! There's OT, just for good measure. Um, just for yeah. good measure. Yeah, so the math here is going to be, there's two crits, four crits, four crits, four damage, and two to pass means that that is It's victory. all over, yeah. Well played to both players. I think definitely, like, it was one of those ones where they were both kind of like nickel and dime each other the entire term. And it just happens to be that the triggers were just ever so slightly more in Chicken Winnish's favor, which you kind of have to expect. You know, it's Ava. They'll put themselves in the position where they are winning on triggers. Feels like Shirataka there just like being a little bit unlucky and just not finding the pieces needed to like match aggression. Again, we saw Awaking being called from Soul to the front row both games. I don't think we ever saw a single 5-attack turn, either of those games, so... Yeah, even though I think Masai is favoured, it just, just wasn't on the cards. No Destiny dealers to search Alter Ego, mm -hmm. no ways. I, I don't think, did we ever see any of the the uh, st other forms of Strife Father outside of, like, um... Mastoge? No, I, yeah, we, I, don't no. Think, I don't think we even saw a single Prelude, like, not even being played as a normal order, which is really rough. Man. It makes us have to wonder exactly what went wrong. But yeah, that is going to be it for today. We are now all done with VPL finals. So there's going to be a, one more little piece of wrap up content coming very soon, as well as the special week 10, which you'll, if you're in the Discord server, you already know what that's all about. If not, stay tuned. You'll see it coming up real soon. But that's going to be it for the finals. We've just seen nine incredible best of threes in Vanguard. So 
Once again, congratulations to the Owl Coop on their 6-3 victory. Completely undefeated throughout the entire run of VPL, which is honestly an amazing achievement. But yeah, you know, like, while we have you here, JJ, you know, like, you were also a captain of a team in the VPL here. Like, you know, you want to quick give your thoughts in like three, five minutes? My thoughts were, uh, there were some things in, as a captain I possibly could have worked on. Uh, and, and it made it a lot more hospitable for my team. So I, I do want to thank them for having the patience of dealing with me, especially as their captain. Um, going forward, I do wish all the best of luck to, to the players who are going to be returning to the uh, VPL, because obviously Ben is going to be doing this again. I mean, no reason oh, yeah. To. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no reason not to. You can go bigger, bolder, better, Absolutely. obviously. And uh, it's it's been a whole lot of fun. It creates a camaraderie uh, of experiences. You get to play with people all over the world. You get to play with uh, world championship tournament players who get uh, only invited to invitationals uh, once a year with Chris and you get to play with them alongside you. You get to experience people with all walks of life, you get to play a little bit of Overdress, a little bit of Premium. You talk about Vanguard, you talk about other games as well. It's uh, it's really fun. I really enjoyed my time. All right. Thank you very much. So hopefully we will be seeing you returning as a captain next year. You know, who knows? Obviously, we'll have no, to wait we'll and see. But yeah, until then, that's been it. Thank you very much for joining me, you know, commentating this last game of VPL. Uh, I'm sure everyone already knows you by this point, but just in case you don't, I'll be putting all of JJ's information down in the description below, so be sure to check him out. Very, very cool. But until then, that is going to be it. And starting very soon, we will be back to more regularly scheduled Yellow Card TCG content. And by that, I mean absolutely nothing. So <laughs> until then, take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Peace out.